Welcome to Gaming Fan, your channel for everything related to the gaming industry and the financial markets. And Mr. Orange is back from his business travels. Oh, guys, oh, guys, what a week. I can't tell you anything, but it was a crazy week. All right, so let's jump directly into it. So market value now on this Monday, the 20th, the 20th of May is now over 75 thousand us dollars and you can see we have a overall loss of minus six point five thousand but we are not including actually gains that i had on other stocks when i was for example selling zinger or activision blizzard and daily gains today is 1.44 percent that's actually pretty neat and if we then go uh, into into the overall uh, gaming portfolio picture here also uh, organized uh, uh, due to the weight so we see uh, microsoft microsoft obviously still one of the strong strong companies that are lifting a lot uh, the, the the gaming portfolio but also i have to say some of the other stocks are co were coming back nicely so and first my friends we go quickly through this list and then i go into into the charts i think this is the easiest and the fastest way for us all and then we also have to talk a bit about take two gta 6 and we have to talk about ubisoft oh my god yeah you, you already hear it at my voice when I talk about Ubisoft. So, <laughs> so you should make, see my face now. I <laughs> know you're not. Microsoft, yeah, 1% 1, 1 up today. Market is still trading, so everything fine. 165% overall with Microsoft. So that's that's all good. But CD Projekt, 1% up. We see here now I'm only minus 16.7% down. So with 142 uh polish slotty so city project is nicely coming back here then we have take two also is now my third or take two is now my third biggest position so uh run over ubisoft but ubisoft also here ubisoft actually was falling so we'll see this at the chart a bit later and came back uh came 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 good back it came good back uh, on friday and uh, today on monday so frontier developer for development uh, is also continuing nicely uh, now 52 percent in my portfolio um there yeah it was a moment there i thought like yeah is, is is it actually losing the pressure is it losing the pressure so it looked a bit like this but now it's back so it's good to see it's good to see it's actually one of the stocks that where i now uh, make a bit bigger money so and i still expect actually frontier to to come uh, come back even bigger than this but hey no financial advice youtuber retail investor this is no and uh, no blah 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 you know the story no investment advice yeah <laughs> embrace a group embrace a group we have to look at the charts so 38 percent, 39 percent only down yet that that feels good this feels good actually guys so this really feels good uh well, because i kind of i kind of this this company i mean it was on the 20 uh swedish krona and then everyone says yeah mr and you should have bought more then then you would have made 50 percent yeah guys that's not how it goes of course uh, yeah i mean it goes like this but uh, risk 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 so Corsair, Corsair, so nothing to talk about. Corsair, Square Enix, Square Enix uh, got punished a little bit, but also today 3.23% back up, 18%, 90% down on my side. So Pull Up Entertainment, Focus Entertainment. I hate this name, guys. I really dislike this name and I still don't understand. Still don't understand why a company can change their name into Pull Up, Pull Up pull up when you even say it in french entertainment so i, I think i would have never bought the stock with this name so <laughs> no seriously this name is terrible it's a terrible name and the stock is therefore also not performing so at 11 30 they want to give out now some new shares I, I just got the notification i think honestly i think we will fall under the 11 euros so i wouldn't buy them now at 11 30 even that i or although that i want to average down a little bit but i'm not sure yet at what point team 17 also nicely in the plus from my side but of course far away from the from the heights we had before tencent yeah around about 22 percent down 
goes in the right direction again. Big Ben, Big Ben, four percent up today. Good to see. But let's see, let's see if if Big Ben can really make the turn around. Unity, no comment on Unity. This is more or less lost money at this point. There's nothing, nothing big is changing there. Digital Bros looks very interesting at this at the on the ten euros again. So, but still down today. Platica came also nicely back. So I'm already one percent up. Also good to see Paradox Interactive had some numbers, had some numbers, and is canceling uh, Life for You Two. I think is the game. They're canceling this as far as uh, if I understood this correctly. So therefore, Paradox Interactive have some very decent titles. Uh, and a good back catalog so long term I, I stay with paradox so long term i am actually even more bullish to average down playway hey i'm in the plus i mean i like playway i have to say they make a lot of trashy games <laughs> a lot of games i actually don't play so don't take it don't take it no offense <laughs> uh, but hey they make money with it so that's good to see capcom dragon stockma one of my favorite game this year and uh, five percent up already here i averaged down of course nintendo uh, i bought i told myself so at 45 uh, 58 so i said nah i have to buy a little bit of nintendo i have to get into the stock and as you can see immediately eight percent up today 2.16 percent down then we have nakon the little french gaming company uh, part of uh, of Big Ben, so there always the question is: you want to buy Big Ben or you want to buy Naken? So Naken actually has a bigger uh, market cap than Big Ben, but Big Ben holds a lot of shares in Naken. You can see this all in some of my older videos. But with Naken, my friends, I would say, hmm, seven percent today. This is this is a strong this is a strong signal that something might change. When it changes, it mostly changes quickly. So, yeah, put on the seatbelt. <laughs> Roller coaster is starting. Nexon, Nexon, I find very interesting. So I have no problem if they drop a little bit more. Then I'm uh, happy, uh, happy to average down. Snail, I'm a bit surprised. That snail is now so consistently, consistent. Um, around those ninety uh, American cents, US dollar cents. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe I stick with snail uh, with, with my six hundred dollars investment. So maybe I, I'm not going further here. CI games I find very interesting. If we see some some signs for a turnaround, so that's then a very interesting company in my opinion for the long term. Also have a decent back catalog. Bluebird, of course, everything is building into the direction of Silent Hill. So Silent Hill is uh, extremely important, but also they have a decent back catalog. So from, from some new, decent newer back catalog. Remedy, my position is a bit small. So I'm definitely looking forward to get Remedy under 20 euros, maybe around 18 euros, around 15 euros. This would be like the marks where I think Remedy is very interesting. So well, for now, I think I have to buy more. Remedy has to become a bigger position. So don't not don't at, at this point don't not. I don't see to buy more. Don't not also although although we actually came back a little bit. Star Wars industry. Yeah, this is a wait and see story. Thunderful Ultimate Games are not global and Starbury. So nothing more to talk about those those companies. Alrighty, so Let's check some charts, some random charts. We make it uh, very easy today just to get a feeling what happened in the gaming market uh, uh, this week. So, so here, yeah, this is Bandai Namco. I also hold actually 80, 80 shares of Bandai Namco. And I am in the plus with this problem is uh, my investing app is not really uh, accepting uh, only Japanese uh, numbers, then it completely mixes everything up. So you can see. We are kind of at a nice upper, upper, so yeah, upper middle high, upper middle high. Can you say this? So, at this point, I'm not considering buy more. So I think it's it's almost a bit cyclical actually, Bandai Namco. So uh, this is a stock you buy always when it's when it's here down under two thousand eight hundred, under two thousand seven hundred. 2700 you know, even if it goes lower then you can average down it's not necessarily a stock at the moment where you 
uh, where you now buy at the heights except you think the elden rings dlc makes such a big difference and we may get an announcement for an elden ring 2 or for a new uh, for a new souls like game everything is possible but the long-term chart overall looks fine with bandai namco i mean i think it's a decent investment and uh, to be honest <laughs> actually from one of the gaming companies this is one of the gaming companies where i even feel like i should have invested a little bit more in the beginning in the beginning so underlining this big ban so here again the chart of big ban so if you go into one year chart, you see here in October 2023, so something happened. So we kind of, we, we, we're kind of building this uh, support line here. And then since yeah, Feb February 24, also already 25%. Of course, this doesn't make a big difference. If you were buying, let's say around about uh, 15 euros, then this all feels terrible. But those are companies where you have to always look on the way we long perspective. So perspectives here from 2005 to 2016. 2016, now we have 2024. So. If we, if we look this like see this as a cyclical measure, but also considering the overall market situation, then uh, hey, there is there is actually some some chance that uh, this 47 million market cap French company with PE ratio of 6.65. Let's have a quick look at the numbers. No special good numbers, but also not so bad actually. First first view. So there is. Let's say the probability is like either they get bored, they go bankrupt, or they simply go up again because someone is just trading the stock up again. Everything is possible. So therefore, this is those are the stocks. Keep them on your watch list. Keep them on your watch list from ATU one at the moment big ben is still alive and they don't look like they are dying immediately. So Bluebird team, as I said, this is actually a stock. Imagine buying it like it's 57 uh, slotties in 2013, then you really made a lot of money. So actually those, uh, the founders, they, they made already good money with this company. 2020, it really went like crazy up. So before this, yeah, no one was really interested, interested in Blue Worm, but that's how it goes sometimes. But keeping up nicely, I, I expect them actually on Silent Hill uh, to drop a little bit. Capcom here again we have to check the Capcom chart so the long-term chart looks pretty neat pretty nice <sighs> so now you say ah why didn't I buy Capcom this is Cap Capcom ADR in the US so why didn't I buy buy Capcom now at those eight dollars or at those lows here yeah well why are you not buying now that's the question you have to ask yourself <laughs> I mean you didn't buy at these lows around eight dollars so eight eight dollars so every time it went up then you get angry and then it fells and then you're still buying and it fells still buying on maybe we might go up again uh, to ten dollars we might go uh, even over the ten dollars if you look at the oval chart it's more probable that we at one point actually uh, going over the ten dollars matching new resident evil games so i think capcom is interesting right now and i have my orders in this is ci games and i like actually the one year chart so this this was very hurtful this was very hurtful i mean look went down to minus 76 percent so therefore small trenches small investments not big money this is not this is not uh, like crazy crypto trading here this is really really long term long-term buying gaming companies you know and buying gaming companies you know the games and you know the business model and if you think that they uh, that they still can execute how they execute for example in 21 and you still think they can still execute in 25 then hey then those investments are for you and if you're lucky someone is pumping the stock again like crazy and then you know, just have to find the right moment to get out of it because obviously this was not sustainable on the other hand if i compare it with bluebird someone was pumping it too and still pumping so so therefore therefore i have the impression that bluebird might 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 come back big but overall if we look at here it's it's starting to create some sort of uh turn turn it around so no financial advice guys you know the story digital pros on the 10 euros right now if i look at the six months chart 
So this was this was again too steep, 37%. So therefore it's good we come back 10%. So maybe we uh, get under the nine euros just to, and then we can create some new support line here. So, but on the five year chart, you see again, it's not really visible. So on the max chart, on the max chart, yeah. On the max chart, you would say, no, it's a good moment. I mean, it's, there's a, if the company survives, if the company survives, I'm repeating it, higher probability goes up, then it goes down. When they just continue making games, when they just continue selling games and making good games and having the IPs, their brands, their back catalog and all of this. So if they still have all of this, if this, if this is still all everything intact long term, those are the moments where you can make money. Yeah, don't not is another thing. So don't not since 2020. Or well, 2018, it IPO'd, just went down, just went down. 38.75 million market cap right now on 2018 company. But here at one point you might expect, is this now a little turnaround? Are we going and settle maybe like five euros? Are we coming back? Could we even double from here? Let's have a look at the numbers. Ooh, 2023 numbers were terrible. But terrible. Let's look at the liabilities. Total liabilities 14 million. 14 million liabilities. Let's look again at the annual income. Total liabilities 14 million. Yeah, here we are. Net income minus 14 million 2023 net income. So not even able to to serve the liabilities and then as the market cap is just like shy of 2.5 times higher than the liabilities ooh this hurts this hurts but hey at one point this company if it still continues making games it gets cheap even with the liabilities and then again either it goes bankrupt it gets bought when it gets bought and you're in the minus you're not you're not profiting long term or you see a little turnaround but at the moment, I'm not interested, to be honest, to buy more Don't Not Frontier Development on the Max chart. Look at the Max chart. So nothing happened. Nothing happened. But the, the magic is here. I was averaging down pretty, pretty substantial because I like the company. And I think they have good games. They have a good back catalog. And as it seems, they still continue making games. And then we found from January to February some sort of support. So let's see how this plays out. So my hope is we are going at least back to the 500. And then at those 500, uh, um, then, then we will see in which direction it goes. But 500 could be a first direction if some investors think it's worth it. 114 million British pounds, 915 people work there. If we look at the annual charts so of minus 21. Net income, of course, not very good. Let's have a look at the liabilities. Total liabilities, 45 million, 45 million. Pooh, double of the net of the minus net income. Revenue is then like uh, uh, two, two point two. We are two point three times higher. Pooh, yeah. Market cap liabilities also double. Looks good. So still, those are growth companies. So this is Naken. Naken definitely since 2013, October, tries to do something here. Really tries to do something here. Game. Yeah, stock. Stock, stock was uh, was IPO'd by Big Ben, of course. Then a lot of investors they got the stock, were just selling it off. P ratio is way too high, 32. It's way too high. Market cap is 105. It's actually a bit high to be honest, because also if you look at the, the games they have, do you believe they make good games? I don't really play their games now personally so much. So maybe maybe those games are not so good. So, but they are niche games. So sometimes niche games can also make more. Net profit margin, 8.19. So it looks like, look like positive 2023. So looking forward to the new numbers, balance sheet, total liabilities, yeah, 240 millions. Are you kidding me? Pooh. Twice, twice the market cap. If I'm interpreting this correctly. Hey, I'm not a financial advisor. 
I'm a YouTuber, guys. So you make your own research, you make your own decisions, and you lose your own money. <sighs> I like the chart of Nixon. I have the feeling, I have the feeling that we might see a little turnaround here. But this goes very slow because if you look now on the one year chart, yeah, it might go above a bit to 18. So this now in euros. So a little turnaround. I think we might see a little turnaround again. But, but turn around maybe to 20 euros. Just just to test it. Is it possible to get over it? 8,231 people work there, you have to imagine. So also if we look at the numbers, decent. Balance sheet, liabilities, 191 billion, 2.2. Yeah, you see, this balance sheet looks already a little bit better. Platica, what happened here? So again, we see it with all the other gaming companies that got hammered, the AA companies, small by companies, got hammered again here. At in April, just decide the market just decided it's over. We have to turn around. We have to turn around the wheel. We have to go in the other direction. And they even have a dividend here. And they have a market cap of over three billion. That's pretty neat. 16, 16.38 PE ratio. So what does it mean? So does this just mean we we have a dead cat bounce as, as people say? And then we continue falling again. Everything's possible, guys. But it's very difficult to say at this point. Maybe, maybe the bad time's over. But since 21, we're falling. So 21, 21. Yeah, numbers, net income was falling since 21. 20, 2020, it was doubling actually from 2020, tri triple to 21. I think there might be still some chances. I mean, I'm still invested in it. Balance sheet, total liability, 3.4 billion Ooh, market cap market cap is equals almost li total liabilities all those little gaming companies have a lot of liabilities my friends yeah remedy remedy is a very interesting company yes and, and, and there you see again that actually it depends a little bit on the market chart it is now in Euro in Helsinki and it trades more like the Polish gaming companies and doesn't trade like uh, like the Swedish gaming companies. Remedy Entertainment also cancelled, I think, just recently a game. It's a very small company. And if we look at the numbers, 2023 here, the income minus 2020 million. Oof. Balance sheet, total liabilities, 11.41. So, but 269 billion so total liabilities is not too bad but 10 cent was buying and therefore the stock went up guys that's what happening so it's possible that some other uh big investors are also adding up on remedy this is definitely not this is not what what retail retail market uh, action looks like no i don't think so Snaily snail, snaily snail, arc ascent, arc ascent, if you know exact ascent. Yeah. I don't like the chart right now. I thought actually it would come back a little bit faster, but we have to see if something changes here also in the numbers. If I look at the balance sheet, we look at the total liabilities, 88 million, and I compare it to the market asset, almost more than two types. Square Enix, yeah, Square Enix. I think what did I say? Square Enix for me, it's up. My Square Enix is yeah, my Square Enix now is is to, uh, today it's up, but but overall I'm ninety percent down. So I'm fine with Square Enix. So that's for me a long term investment. Uh, so looks looks decent to me. So and I'm sure at least we come back to the five thousand eight nine hundred, and this is actually a good moment to average also a little bit down in my personal opinion. Although I think the PE ratio is a bit high. Dividend here to a really the dividend. I don't know. So net income 14, 15 billion. Net income 50 billion. 15, 15 in 2024. Yeah, that's not full 2024. It's obviously just the beginning of 2024. So 50 billion doubling, 50 billion roundabout like this. Total liabilities 93 billion, 613 billion Japanese yen. 
yeah and then thunderfall group so this is actually how a uh, stock looks like that completely goes to the toilet let's call it like this let's call it like a balance sheet liabilities 1.81 billion I mean, the stock has a market cap now of 124 million and the liabilities are like 10 times higher. Hmm, probably I should sell it. Probably I should just sell it. So, I mean, this is a total, yeah, this is a complete, a complete loss, I guess, uh, on my end here. A little bit like with Starbreeze. Goodbye, 700 euros, dollars. So, and then we come, of course, to Ubisoft. So today, 5% up again. Look at this. So if you look at the overall chart here, it's the overall chart. So we could, we could, yeah, Ubisoft could hold up itself. That's very interesting. And then quickly to Embracer before we get to the news. Embracer now, I read people are shorting Embracer at this, yeah, at this level. That's a very nice technical driven move. It can go wrong, it uh, it can go good, but it can also completely go wrong because maybe the third time is the moment you are breaking over it. So, and then you go to to 30, uh, to, uh, to, to 40 Swedish kroner. So everything's possible. So I'm not shorting stocks. I'm, I'm definitely not that agile. So uh, yeah, I would, I would miss a lot of important moments to get out because sometimes we have a with a small stock, I also missed a moment to, to get out of a long position and then I have I have a loss. So everything's possible. You missed orange and buy an ETF. Yeah, guys. I think we are over this. So CD project. I like it. I really like in the direction now. I told you this already. So it was slowly building up here. So you remember I was I was stacking, I was stack, stacking uh, here even more shares. So I, because this was this was a good feeling here around 120 and uh yeah 1995 uh polish slot it was a good feeling and now we're coming back the question is of course 156 160 180 difficult to say so let's go back to ubisoft because ubisoft is our our big uh, news here so we had uh, reports full year earnings report here we go. So I think I make a dedicated video about Ubisoft. I'm not losing too much time now, but we can see net bookings are up 33% to true revenues, 34% uh, up player recurring investments minus 12%, back catalog plus 49%. So fiscal year 24 key highlights, record annual and uh, fourth quarter net bookings, improved activity metrics. We have Rainbow Six and Assassin's Creed franchise both achieved very strong net bookings growth and each benefited from solid fan bases over about 30 million unique active players. So Rainbow Six is still the big, the big, big player here. So Ubisoft just needs a new Rainbow Six without destroying the old Rainbow Six. <laughs> oh, that's difficult. That's difficult. Counter-Strike 2, you know the story. Back at the lookout performance, notable driven by stellar Rainbow Six Siege performance, return to strong sequences of quality releases, B2P partnerships. Yeah, the streaming rights for Activision Blizzard we had. For, then performance in line with targets. That's good. Cost reduction program on track. Mm -hmm. Let's go quickly through it. Update on cost reduction plan. So at least 200 million reduction by fiscal year 26 and versus fiscal year 23 fixed cost base. Yeah, kick out those people that make so weird decisions like with the new Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Total headcount down by more than 1.7 thousand since end September 2022, while retention improved over the period. And then fixed cost base standing at around 1.6 billion and at fiscal 24, representing a reduction of around 150 million year on year. Ah, that's good. Strategic focus, open world adventures, experiences designed, experience designed to plunge players at heart of an adventure through an immersive world, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, this sounds good. This means simply big open world games. 
dynamic market with, with high barriers to entry and attractive growth opportunities fueled by technological disruptions increased demand for immersive experience and platform diversification. And then with games as a service, X, yeah, then X Defiant, the largest, yeah, largest addressable and growing market in terms of place and value, 120 billion. So we call them, let's call them the multiplayer social interaction titles. Yeah, big open world and gas native experience. So that's what I like. Good way forward. Netbooking's around 275 million is the target sell it not bookings growth slight increase in non ifrs operating income growth non ifr cash flow from operation leading to positive so okay speak english strong yeah strong fiscal year 25 lineup including two of the most anticipated release of the year so yeah that's it so assassin's creed shadows and outlaws so shadows cannot become a flop and star wars outlaws as well has to be a success and free to play rainbow six mobile is going to be a success in my opinion the division resurgence also and x defined yeah has good chances so but ubisoft Ubisoft, Ubisoft, where's the news? Where's the news? Here we go. Where's the news, Ubisoft? Here. Yeah, this was the news. This was the big news. So, a lot of uh, Assassin's Creed uh, DLCs, of course. So, the casual gamer is angry, he has to buy, pay 200 euros to experience everything. But maybe the casual gamer should understand that it's not even, it's not the goal that the casual gamer can experience everything it's not even the goal otherwise uh, it would be all in a package <laughs> yeah just saying this just putting this out there and i know my channel we want to make money guys and uh, we have all the other discussions for the other channels so this discussions uh, why uh, microtransactions good or bad they are good if they make us money they are not good if they don't make us money so here was the whole discussion was about uh, the skin color of the samurai <laughs> i mean ubisoft really went again for a super complicated path finding this tiny little story in japanese history uh, of a samurai from africa and then they built the whole story of the only Assassin's Creed that plays now in Japan around this person and about a uh, Japanese local shinobi sidekick. So, I mean, what shall I say, guys? I'm really out of words. It would have been so easy just using a Japanese local native character. But I hope, I hope this is not costing. I hope this is not costing uh, us... Uh, as investors uh, too much in the end because when the gamers are canceling this game and they don't want to play it, it can cost us but that's the question are those decisions bad for the games or not so i mean that's something we really have to look empirical so i would say as a gamer's perspective i'm a bit annoyed by by the dei policies as an investor i say does it make us money does it make us money? Then whatever, do what you want. So it's maybe if it really makes us money. I mean, if there are more people that want to play games like this and want to spend a lot of money on games like this, fine, do it. As a gamer, I say, yeah, well, that's not so cool. But those are the two souls in my press. Now, how you say it? So the two two hearts in my breast. So, all right. Also, the Prince of Persia. Does he look Persian to you? Same problem. Star Wars Outlaws seems to be going in the right direction. Then we had, uh, yeah, we hear the PowerPoint of, uh, yeah, here we go. We have a nicer PowerPoint, so take two. So not going through the whole PowerPoint now, but yeah, they, yeah, they actually, so the, so Grand Theft Auto 5 is not coming. It's not coming now. Here's the news. Take two confirms no Grand Theft Auto 6 in current fiscal year. Not coming now so quickly. And then uh, Strauss 
Selnix hat, yeah, well, it's going to be an amazing game. It's going to be a great game. And uh, and we just push it. We push it. We postpone it. Because we want to deliver you a great game. And I agree. If they manage to deliver a game of the same quality like GTA 5 and a, a cash machine that like GTA 5, fine, push it, push it, push it. From an investor's perspective, from a gamer's perspective, I'm asking myself, will I even still be alive when this game comes out? <laughs> so that's a running gag, guys. So here, yeah, Zynga, combination gaming industry, a strong secular tailwind, so estimate 3.5 billion global video games players in 2023. 77 million gen generation 9 consoles outstanding 3.3 plus billion active global global video game players well wow, that's almost half of the world population interactive entertainment is the number one entertainment vertical looks all great looks all great so and Grand Theft Auto I think still makes money Red Dead Redemption still makes money and then the sports games actually also still make money even if People always hate so much on them. Borderlands games are semi semi successful. Private division. Key releases and projects. Ah, even private division. No. Wait. This is actually a note. Is this a note slide? No, that's for May 2024. What was I reading recently about private division? So Still going to bring those games forward? All right. So those games came out by Private Division, and then Zinger, yeah, etc. So not going in details here. I have to make a dedicated video for this. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this. And then I would say leaving it here again, a very long video, but uh, I hope you always learn a little bit and to, yeah, for information and entertainment purposes only and you see it's very difficult to make money with individual stocks especially in the gaming sector especially in times like this uh hope is now of course that times are changing but it's also a lot with market timing it has a lot to do with market timing so you have to take have a good eye on everything what's going on and i'm here to show you uh maybe what the mistakes you can do but uh, what mistakes to avoid you see, it's not very easy, but hey, that's my journey. So I'm just here to show you what I'm doing. You do your own journey. You do what you want and you lose probably your money yourself, uh, whatever I'm telling you uh, or not on my YouTube channel. Thank you. See you next time. Bye bye.